This time we're going to go in and we're going to look at the relationships and how to calculate your total and your average costs. Now we're going to assume in this case that we're going to be producing some output. We're going to call that Q. And uh, to make things simple, uh, we're going to produce up to uh, six units of this output. Five and six. And we're also going to assume uh, that we have uh, figured out our total cost of production. And we're going to list that if we don't produce any output, it will cost us $60. Uh, our first unit of output uh, total cost will be $155. Our second unit of output, $220. Our third unit, $255. Our fourth unit, 300, our fifth unit, 350, and our sixth unit, 450. All right, so those are the numbers that have been given to us. Let's say the first thing that we want to do is go in and calculate the marginal cost of production. Now remember, your equation for marginal cost is always going to be the change in total cost divided by your change in quantity. Remember, if the word marginal bothers you, uh, insert the word additional. So this is going to be the additional cost of, produ of producing each, uh, each unit. Now remember, the way I have this problem set up, uh, your change in quantity is always going to be equal to 1 because I've gone from 0 to 1 to 2 and so on. And so therefore, in this case, your marginal cost, since this is going to be equal to 1, is going to be your change in total cost. So we're going to take the total cost at time period 1 minus the total cost at time period 0. So in other words, if we go in and we produce our first unit of output, our total cost is 155, uh, and then we subtract off 60. So 155 uh, minus 60 is going to give us $95. So that's our additional cost of producing our first unit of output. Our marginal cost for producing our second unit of output would be 220 minus 155 which is going to give us $65. 255 minus 220 is going to give us $35. 300 minus 255 is going to give us $45. 350 minus 300 will give us $50. And then finally, when we produce our sixth unit of output, 450 minus 350 is going to give us $100 of additional cost. So that's how you would go in and you would calculate your marginal cost. Now, let's assume for the moment that you were asked, given the information that we have, to figure out what your total fixed cost is going to be. Right? And you'll always see that denoted by TFC, total fixed cost. Remember, your total fixed cost will always be the costs that are incurred regardless of how much output you actually produce. Now, interestingly enough, most of the time you are given what that total fixed cost is, but in this particular problem, you're not. And so you can actually derive it by going in and looking and saying, well, if I don't produce any output, I still incur a cost of $60. So therefore, my total fixed cost, regardless of my level of production, is going to be a constant $60. So I'll go ahead and write that all the way down. All right, so there's my total fixed cost. Now, the next problem will be calculating our total variable cost. Remember, your variable costs are the things that within a short period of time, you do actually have control over and varies with the amount of output. Now, if you'll remember, your total cost of production is always equal to your total fixed cost minus, I'm sorry, plus your total fixed cost plus your total variable cost. Well, in this particular case, we have two of the three. We have our total cost and we have our total fixed cost. So we can actually derive our total variable cost by doing just a little bit of algebra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract off my total fixed cost from both sides. 
And that leaves me with the equation of total cost minus total fixed cost then is going to be equal to my total variable cost. So the reason I did that was I noticed I do have my total cost and I already have my total fixed cost. So if I take my, let's say uh, in this particular case, I have uh, zero output. So I take my total cost, which is 60, minus my total fixed cost, uh, which is 60. So my total variable cost is going to be equal to zero. All right. For my first unit of output, my total cost is 155 minus my total fixed cost, which is still 60. So 155 minus 60 is going to give me $95. All right, so in this case, we'll take total cost minus our total fixed cost, which is $60 always, and that will give us our total variable cost. And so it goes. We have 220 minus 60 will give us $160. 225 minus 60 will give us $195. 300 minus 60 will give us $240. 350 minus 60 will give us $290. And then finally, 450 uh, minus 60 will give us $300 and ninety dollars. All right, so there's our total uh, variable cost curve. All right, the next thing we want to do then is calculate our average variable cost. All right, your equation for average variable cost. When you take an average, you always take the total divided by your quantity. So in this case, since we're talking about average variable cost, we're going to go in and take our total variable cost, and then we're going to divide that by our quantity. So in this case, then, we'll go in, and we can't have a number for this one, because this would be going in, and uh, if you have a quantity of zero, you would have a total variable cost of 60 divided by zero, uh, which is going to give you uh, no solution. But when we go in and we produce a quantity equal to 1, then our average variable cost is going to be equal to 95 divided by 1. So our average variable cost for our first unit of output is going to be $95. All right, on the second one, you have an average, uh, your total variable cost of 160. 160 divided by 2 is going to give you 80 and so on. 195 divided by 3 will give you $65. 240 uh, divided by 4 is going to give you $60. Uh, 290 divided by 5 is going to give you $58. And then lastly, 390 divided by 6 is going to give you $65. So there's your average variable cost. And then finally, uh, to go in and calculate your uh, average total cost, again, uh, an average is always taking the total divided by quantity. So your average total cost will simply be equal to your total cost, which we already have, and that is going to be divided by your quantity. So again, the first one we can't do anything with because we would be taking our 60 and dividing that by zero, and that gives you an undefined solution. But for a quantity of one, then we would take our total cost, which is going to be $155, divided by 1, which is going to give us $155. All right, so that would be 155 right here. For your quantity of 2, your average total cost would be the 220 divided by 2, which is going to give you 110. 255 divided by 3 will give you 85. 300 divided by 4 is going to give you 75. Uh, 350 divided by 5 will give you 70. 
And then finally, uh, 450 divided by 6 is going to give you $75. So that's how you would go in given your quantity and given your total cost and derive your other cost curves by simply going in and calculating your marginal, and your average total cost, and your average variable cost.